Hello, my name is Jeannie Clark. I'm a visual artist. I make drawings, fine art prints, and I also paint. More recently, I started to teach online via Zoom, and I have private workshops, and I also work for a local institution. I'm making this video really to show you how the impact of COVID-19 has changed the direction of my work and also how it's impacted on me as an artist personally. My work here was generated by an experience or experiences that I have of swimming. I'm not a swimmer, but I actually like the sensation of swimming in water and the idea of floating and feeling free and light and, and just being able to, to move easily, to tippy tail in the water, just have complete freedom or pleasure in the process of, of actually being in water. The two plates that you can see here are collagraph plates. And collagraph plates can be made in any number of different ways. In my case, I tend to use mount board and I add different materials to create textures on the plate itself. So I take a piece of mount board, I actually draw onto the mount board, and then I actually scribe into the mount board with a scalpel or a, another implement that would make marks. And I add textures using a, a variety of materials the materials that you can see here, I've been using something called carborundum. And carborundum is a little bit like gritty sand. I've applied the carborundum to the collagraph plate and made it stick to the plate using waterproof PVA glue. I've wiped some of the PVA off the surface and in other areas I've actually let the carborundum stay as a block. So here that the carborundum has been applied as a solid negative shape. This was a single collagraph plate and this particular plate itself has two plates to create the image with a second plate applied over the top of it in the form of a block print. And so the blue areas that you can see are the second plate that I printed over the top of the collagraph. As I said, that these images that you can see are really about my translating my feelings of being in water and what water feels like to me. It won't be everybody's experience, but it does give you the experience of movement and of pleasure, of weightlessness. And I must admit, I'm aching to go swimming again and really miss the idea of going swimming. The images that you can see here at the moment are, this one is a monoprint or monotype. So I've rolled the ink directly onto a sheet of perspex and then scribed into the ink with these lines here. I think it was with the back of a brush to create these, these I won't say etched lines, but these drawn lines. And I really enjoyed this pro process of working. It's very, very similar to painting and it can be freeing and accidents can help to develop an idea. This particular plate that you can see here is part monotype and part collagraph. The darker areas are the, the, the elements of the collagraph and the areas behind are made by combining a monotype plate with a collagraph plate. Both of these processes are really based on the idea of my, my, my experiences of being in water, of movement, of being able to move really quite freely. In this next slide, you can see that these drawings were made post-swimming. I came back, took my sketchbook out, closed my eyes and started really to doodle. So they're really more memory drawings or, 
or drawings which are a kind of I've tried to actually capture that experience of being in water. I wanted to continue looking at movement, but this time a land-based movement. And I had an idea that if I made some very, very big plates and involved other parties to help me develop an idea, then I wouldn't be the sole author of a creative piece of work. And so I invited two people. One person was a musician and the other a counsellor to take part in, in this dance, if you like, or dance or movement over the surface of a collagraph plate. So here we've got a collagraph plate and the plate has actually been covered with or dribbled with PVA glue and then some of the carborundum grit has actually been sprinkled over the top. So the idea was that the two participants would move or dance over the plate in bare feet and dribble carborundum or scribe into the plate so that the plate itself carries the trace marks, the indexical signs of their experience of dancing. Councillor Friend was going to write about the dance and the involvement in the project from a point of empathy, given that the two dancers would somehow interact with each other and there would be elements of touching in the project. And the musician actually wrote the music. My part in this uh, project was to both provide the choreograph plates to draw the dancers as, as they danced over the surface of the plate, take photographs and record the event using video. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we couldn't do this because of social distancing and close proximity. So far, this project remains unfinished. Here you can see some elements of the, the dance project where I did a proof set of prints to see how things would actually go, to work out problems. This is how some elements of the, of the project might have looked at the end of it. So we're now moving into a, a, a time when uh, lockdown really did kick off. I felt quite bereft that I wasn't able to continue my, my project. My project, as I've as I considered it, was a development of movement with elements of touch and sound and embodied experience. So I actually resorted to making a series of sketches. And during the, the process of making sketches, I got wet, rained on. I ended up feeling really, really quite cold and miserable. And on one particular occasion, I was actually so wet that the water was actually running through my coat and coming out of my sleeves. I took shelter under a tree and suddenly trees became a focus for me. Or nature's, it really sort of hit me with a hammer that I, you know, really did need to take notice. I really started to get the urge to go out into uh, the country and to start planting, to start planting uh, seeds, flowers, to really physically get involved with nature in lots of ways. So alongside making drawings, I turned my back garden into, and I don't have a big space, it's, it's really a yard, but I got a few raised beds in there and bags of, of potatoes and started to make drawings of what it was really like to be in a space that was natural, that was outside, that, that yeah, I could experience the elements. This particular plate is a, a collagraph. It's really quite a big collagraph, and you can see an example of that just behind me. I drew onto a piece of mount board, used carborundum grit, PVA, and drew into the plate, getting lines of movement. And again, as you can see, the plate itself 
really took a little bit of uh, a hammer in that I really wanted to get the sensation of movement. As my work continued during lockdown, I really did start to document what it was like to be outside in the elements. And so I witnessed areas where bits of Nottingham were actually flooded. Being outside involved being in the elements, in the rain, in the wind. This charcoal and chalk drawing was one example of my experiencing the elements. And as a result of making this drawing, I made another collagraph plate. As you can see here, what I'd actually started to do was to proof the plate to see what I could get out of this particular image. So this, this is the first, if you like, printing of this particular image. This is a larger version of, of the collagraph plate. And to make this plate uh, or make this image, there are, I think it was three, three different plates that I used to build the image. So printmaking is, or can be, layering. It's, it's about layering textures, layering to build an image. Making a, a collagraph plate is a process that does take a lot of thinking about, and it's quite a slow process. And so to balance that process, I started to make a series of, of, of drawings, going back outside to make just quite simple drawings, I actually found that I enjoyed the process of direct mark making. And again, you can actually see lots of movement or gestural marks in the work that I do. The trees that you can see here, present but absent, and also this particular tree, they're, they're both in Bestwood Country Park. And the tree itself actually fascinated me. It looks like the bottom of the tree is trying to grow up and encase or, or protect the rest of the tree. The second drawing, which was present but absent, I became really aware of the fact that when we're out and about these days, we often walk past or try to avoid another person. So we are in the presence of another person. We are in the presence of each other, but we, we actually, we might acknowledge each other with a, with a nod of the head, but given that we usually have masks on, it's really difficult to actually smile to be a human being. So this drawing here, pet present but absent, was a kind of, if you like, an acknowledgement of that. The pleasure that I felt in uh, lockdown, in being in nature, was, was quite significant. And in this recording, what I've actually managed to capture are the sounds of birdsong and the sounds of people walking in the woods. And there has been some really key research that has been done by various universities and different cultures that you can have a prescription to go and lie in the woods to discover natural sounds and to smell the earth and just generally experience what it's like to be in nature. And it has a profound effect on our well-being and sense of where we fit into the world and to embrace and uh, actually really, really, really enjoy nature. So I'm just going to play you a little snippet of this video. These are the trees that I actually became fascinated with in, in Bestwood Country Park. The next phase of my video is really to talk about how I make a, a collagraph plate. And sometimes I combine my plates with a block print process, and sometimes I use a, a, a single plate. I'm going to show you a collagraph, and I'm going to show you the, the processes that, that I use to make a, a collagraph. 
This is a, a chronograph plate that I've named Spring. And the plate itself I've, has been cut in, in various sections. So it's, it's, it's a multi-layered plate or series of plates. If I hadn't made the image through a series of multi-layered plates, some of these colours wouldn't have overlaid in the way that I wanted given that I was using really quite dark colours, some of these colours would have, would have actually bled out into the, into the lighter colours. And so I made a series of plates. This is the background plate here. Here you can actually see the areas of the mount board that I've cut into and peeled away. Here I've used parcel tape to cut shapes and scribed into the plate with a scalpel. In this section, I've actually cut into the plate and peeled at the top layer away. I then cut another plate. This is much more of a freestanding plate. Again, I've scribed into the collagraph plate and these areas are uh, where I've actually applied carborundum grit. It's the carborundum grit that I go back to the other image the, the carborundum that grit that gives you these really rich dark tones. Moving on from that to get some of the other layered experience in that plate, I've actually cut just flat sheets of card. These are block prints. There is no texture on these whatsoever. What I wanted to do was to use these plates just to carry different elements of colour to the original plate. So let me go back to the image again. Here you can see the background plate. You can see the block print that I've applied over the top. And you can see the etched or scribed marks that I've made into this plate. This collagraph plate has been cut into or scribed into with a, with a scalpel. I've actually cut sections of the plate away revealing the pattern on the surface here. And areas here that are lighter, I've actually painted uh, waterproof PVA glue. By using the PVA glue on the, on the plate, it means that I can make the ink skid off the plate. So that would actually create some really interesting light, dark areas. What I was looking for here was tonal contrast. And I made this image for someone who was particularly interested in the arts and crafts movement. So this is a bit of a diversion away from my usual projects in which I take an idea that I might have extracted from a novel, book, or play, or a, a, a sensation of being outside. This was, was really more of a, a commissioned piece of work. I've also used it as part of my teaching. I do some teaching online and I also run private workshops. Due to COVID-19, these workshops now take place on Zoom or on a particular learning platform um, called Canvas. If I take you to the next slide, we should have a video. And this video actually will talk you through the processes of inking and printing a, a collagraph plate. So this is me in my, in my studio. Um, and in front of us, we can, you can see that there's, a, I have a, a collagraph plate. Um, the collagraph plate ha, is, has been uh, made by uh, using materials to um, treat the plate with to create textures. I also um, cut into the plate with a scalpel to uh, cut away some areas and um, make textures with 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 the with the with the scalpel um, to create tones. The lighter areas have been made using um, PVA glue. Um, I use a waterproof uh, PVA glue. Um, and basically um, some textures on the plate will absorb more ink and the PVA glue 
um, will allow the ink to actually skid off. So when the ink, when the uh, plate is wiped, um, the plate itself will will have uh, quite a, a tonal effect. Lighter areas will skid off the PVA, um, and other areas, as I've said, will um, absorb more of the ink. I'm using intaglio inks here. Um, and these can be obtained from an Intaglio printmaker in London. There are other people, places you can actually um, buy these inks from online. So I've applied the ink um, onto the plate um, using um, cut sections of mount board. Um, and now I'm actually using scrim to gently or not so gently push the ink into the grooves on the plate um, some of the excess ink will be actually wiped off but really what I'm trying to do is to just remove the shine um, from the plate um, remove the uh, inks um, from the from the plate um, so that the textures that I, I've created um, during the um, construction process uh, or making of the plate will actually show um, the design beneath. So I'm gently removing the, the ink um, using a rubbing motion. The plate actually is actually sitting on top of old magazines and I use old magazines just to, you know, to, to sort of tear off um, sections of the background to, to sort of keep my work area a little bit clean. I think I'm almost at the process now where the enough ink has actually been removed from the plate. You can see here the um, PVA quite clearly. So you get that nice tonal, tonal contrast. So now I'm about to remove my gloves. Um, and uh, I have some pre-prepared paper um, waiting uh, on the table beside me um, in a plastic bag. The paper that I'm using is printmaking paper. It's called Somerset paper. And this paper I've actually wet um, with water. Um, when you first get the Somerset paper, it's really quite stiff. Um, and to get it a little bit more malleable, so it, it, it goes over the surface of the plate and um, accepts the, the grooves that I've actually created. Um, it, it helps to mold the paper around the, the plate itself. So now I'm using my Hawthorne press um, and about to print print the plate. I can actually print this plate numerous times with one colour or I can actually ink the plate up with a number of colours. So um, once you've actually created the plate, you can actually make lots and lots of different variations um, of a print using different colours. So as you can see, um, the PVA glue allows the ink to skid off, leaving lighter areas and the, the areas that are uh, slightly darker are areas where I've actually cut into the plate with a scalpel and peeled some of the um, mount board away. So this is me, this is my printmaking and my very amateur way of making uh, a video. It's been an interesting experience. I think you might guess that I've employed lots and lots of different odd techniques to arrive at a result. But that's art, isn't it? You just do things, make it work in whatever way, shape or form. You can see more of my work on my website, and that's genieclark.co.uk, or on Instagram, and that's clark.genie. And thank you for listening.